My name's Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and this is part five of my XXL Giant Lego Go-Kart build. If you've been watching this build series so far, you'll have seen I've tested the go-kart and I've had it running up to 30 miles an hour. But there are some problems with it. It's a little bit too short for me. I know I built it for my nephew, but I do want it to be a little bit longer so that I'm more comfortable riding it and the seat will be movable so it will still fit my nephew. It wouldn't steer around corners very well and that's because it had a solid rear axle. doesn't want to turn at speed, as soon as you hit the accelerator it just goes from a straight bottom. In order to split the rear axle on the go-kart, I need a special high tolerance part made. Unfortunately for me, the Royal Marine Engineers at HMS Sultan offered to help out. It's a precision part with H7 tolerances and it's going to enable me to split this axle but rejoin it and still maintain the strength of a solid single piece axle. And I certainly don't have the skills or the tools to make it in my workshop. Here's the part from the uh, Royal Naval Engineers at HMS Sultan. This beautifully machined piece of aluminium tube here, which is going to have some bearings inserted into it. And it's been precision machined to H7 tolerance, so it should take the axles and join them back up as a solid piece, but allow each part to spin freely. Also, I have got here single print 12 stud Lego Technic beams printed by my friend uh, Ivan Miranda in Spain and of course you probably most of you already know his channel if you don't go ahead and check that out but these are amazing these are printed on his large format 3d printer that he built himself I've got these rather beautiful looking flip sky tech black motors here these are 140 kV the ones I've got right now are 149 so the uh, the ones that are fitted are slightly faster just marginally, but these should have a little bit more torque. First of all, I've got to strip it right back, take all of the back end off, and um, prepare to put the new chassis rails in place. There's one of the uh, eight stud Technic beams there, which is joined in two pieces, printed in two halves and joined in the middle. Here are the ones that Ivan has built for me. And in fact, it actually feels lighter, which it probably is, because this was printed on a Morstruder. There's quite a lot of material, and also there's the join in the middle and the two bolts that hold it together. And so now I've got to replace this uh, Technic axle here with this longer six-way axle, which came out from the original one. So that'll give me my three connection points across. These 12 stud beams have now got three points to hold them on with, which hopefully is gonna stop uh, too much flex in the chassis. Of course, I'm gonna have to clear out these holes because the top of the holes never print very well. Yeah. got some digital scales here so that's 1350 grams 1530 so there's only 200 grams more but 50% longer yeah baby there's still quite a lot of flex in it when I haven't got the plate on yet which goes underneath but uh, yeah it's it's going to be quite a bendy go-kart. <laughs> what I need to do with this joiner is I've got a bearing to go down inside. So that has to go all the way to the bottom. There it goes. So what I might do is 3D print a tube that slides down inside of that. And then this flanged bearing goes on the end and that will be glued in place. And the, that will sit on the edge of that inner tube, which is going to push that bearing down into position and hold it there. 
and the flange stops it from going in any further. Glue that in place and then a tube that sits inside and holds the two pieces together. So there are going to be three M6 grubs here which are going to go down into this slot which will hold these two parts together. Yep, there we go. I've just gone all the way through and hit the back end of that. So I'm now going to pull it back a bit. Now the two collars here set the distance, the gap in here. So one keeps that bearing in place and the other keeps the whole thing from sliding back and forwards. So now I've got a solid axle. So it's stopping the go-kart from flexing like this, but it can spin independently. It feels like I've retained the strength because if I pull one side, the whole chassis wants to twist, which sounds, sounds terrible, but that's kind of what I want because I want this not to fold in two when I'm sat in it. And I've got to remember to put that piece inside that tube to set the bearing distance correctly. Otherwise the bearing in the back end here could start sliding up this way. And then there's really no leverage between these two points. And that's where all that strength comes from. So next I'm going to try and reinstate the electronics and the motors. I've probably got some rewiring to do for that and then get the seat in place. I've got a feeling I've got to print something for the seat so I can move it up and down uh, because it is now adjustable, which is kind of fun. This is the seat in the rearmost position, and there's a lot more room here. If I can bring it forward a stud to there, I can come forward another one, and that would be the original position about here. So that's probably where my uh, nephew would drive it because I'm sure that's long enough for him and it puts more of the weight behind him, which is really good. But for me, I'm guessing it's probably gonna be about here somewhere, uh, but I need to print two more of these support blocks so that I can adjust the position. I can't make, believe how much bigger just three studs make it. That's about 200 mil, about eight inches, something like that. But it's, uh, yeah, starting to feel and look um, really big. Here are the parts that I needed. So I'm ready to fit the seat, but before I do that, I've also printed up this tube which if you remember, I needed to finish off my uh, new bearings, which are inside of the rear axle here. This came out pretty easy. So now I just need to fit my tube. Uh, the bearings already inside there still. So the tube then goes in and then the other bearing on top and then it all goes back together again. So that should go down. Oh, that's something's not right there. That's not going all the way down. Um, maybe the bearing's not gone in. Silly me, right, so I just printed this part up and I just drew it uh, quite quickly off my CAD drawing. Uh, but when I took the measurement, I forgot to account for the bearing that's already inside. So I'd accounted for the flange bearing that goes on top, but I hadn't taken into the thickness of the bearing that's already down the tube. So it's exactly the bearings length too long. Uh, now I could either reprint this, um, which would probably take about 30 minutes or so or I could try and put it on my lathe and just skim the end off, which I think is what I'm going to do. Oh, that's a nice fit. Much better that way around. Beautiful. There we go. So now that tube is going to hold that bearing in place down there. And of course the tube is larger than the axle, so it's not going to interfere with the axle. Also picked up some little grub screws to replace the uh, screws that were holding the axle in place on the back of this clamp. That's the drive system back in place and it feels pretty good. Now I do have another major issue to sort out with the drive system, the brakes because the axle is split in half. I have two separate disc brakes here. Uh, if I run two cables from the pedal, one to this brake and one to this brake, 
then they're probably not going to break the same amount. It'd be really hard adjusting them. So I'll probably find that one side breaks harder than the other. And that's going to want to turn the go-kart. So what I'm thinking of doing is having one cable come in from my brake pedal, which would be this cable here. And that's going to come to some kind of a mechanism. And I'm going to explain it using this piece of wood. It'll be a lot smaller than this, obviously, but imagine this cable here comes in and attaches to the middle of this pivoting mechanism. Then I have another cable coming from one end and another cable coming from this end. So this would go to this break and this would go to this break. Now, as the cable pulls, which is my hand, this is the brake pedal being pushed, it pulls both brakes simultaneously. But as one brake applies force and starts to stiffen up, it basically stops this piece of wood from moving on this side and puts more tension on the opposite side. So effectively, it starts breaking the brake that wasn't having as much force applied to it. And you get a differential braking system which applies an equal amount of force regardless of how you've set the cables up. I've just reinstalled the electronics so I can try out this new split axle before I put the seat back in place. And power. Oh, connection error. Okay. I'd forgotten the last time we were uh, running the go-kart, this fell off the bottom of the seat and I severed through a wire. It's uh, dropped onto the floor and mashed through a wire, but it's all right because the throttle's still working. The important bit. I've fixed this uh, serial connection that was broken on here and I just chucked the wheels back on so we can try again. Break. An accelerator. That looks pretty good. They look pretty well matched as well. Is an electronic differential. I install this one and that one still turns so that's the equivalent of going around a corner and let's see if the brake the electronic braking is working. Yeah that's pretty good. It's still not enough without the disc brakes but uh, yeah that's working pretty nicely. Um, I think now it's time to try the seat in place. This is the moment of truth. See how much flex there is. Yeah, there's a little bit of bounce in there, but you know, it doesn't feel terrible. I mean, it already feels like it's going to be easier. Um, oh yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, that's loads of room. It's luxury, one might say. I mean, I don't think that needs to be, I don't think it needs to go any further back. So that was only two studs. I could go back one more, but I think the steering wheel's going to be too far away then. Uh, of course, I can always extend the uh, steering column, but feels like the chassis feels strong enough. Plenty of room. And especially now I've got that electronic differential. It should be able to turn a bit easier. Oh yeah, look at that, it wants to turn straight away. Now before, when I was on this floor and I was doing this test several months ago by spinning the back wheels by hand, the go-kart just wanted to go in a straight line. Now this is a slippery floor, so that wasn't that surprising, but now it's actually turning immediately. Now I'm going to try and fit one of these uh, Flip Sky Tech motors which are rather sexy looking black in colour. In fact I think they're blending quite nicely on the back here.
Well, I've got the new motor in place, uh, but there are a couple of differences. So I can't get the pulley far enough onto the shaft because there's a 10 mil shoulder left on the motor shaft. Also, the shaft is shorter, so it's not going to meet up with my bearing inside of here, which was to stop this motor from pulling around when the belt's tensioned up. I've just spun the motor around so the cable's out the back now. Um, I haven't resolved the problem with the pulley not going on far enough, but I think the way to do that is to put a small spacer between the mounting plate and the motor, and that will take the whole lot back further towards the plate. It's just starting to come off the edge of that larger pulley, which is annoying. So I think a little spacer on here, like a one mil spacer, should just pull that back in line again. Probably good enough to test though. There's both motors installed. I've disconnected the belts so that I can tune them up. Uh, I've got the laptop with the vest tool running and it's plugged in, so um, let's give it a go. Run detection, here we go. Is one of them winding up? Is that one winding up? So far, so good. Okay, motor current, 57 amps, 57 amps, yep. That's them configured, so I'm going to put the belts back on and then reconnect my throttle and brake and uh, give them a go. It's pretty good. That's nice. Now these motors are 140 kV, so they should be a little bit slower than the ones before, which were 149 kV. Also, my batteries are currently in a um, storage charge state, so they're not fully charged, and I can see that on my display. They're currently sitting at about 45 volts, so they're a little bit lower than what they usually would be when they're freshly charged. And that's telling me uh, a no load speed of 30 miles an hour, which is probably a little bit high, if anything, because there's no load on it. I think before I was getting 28 on the 149 kVs, so that doesn't really make sense because these should be slower. And I have gone back to my smaller pulleys. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with 30 mile an hour, but it does feel to me like it should be slower. I was expecting something more like 26 miles an hour. One feature I'm keen to try out in the vest settings is traction control. Um, now I have no idea how it works. I can only imagine it monitors each side of the uh, split differential here and adjusts the speed accordingly um, depending on what speed the other wheel is doing. So let's give it a go. So at the moment traction control is turned off. And yeah, I can install this wheel and the other wheel will spin up to full speed. Uh, let's switch it on now. Okay, that should be on. So that behaves the same. If I hold this wheel, there you go. So the other wheel now is not spinning up to full speed because this one is stalled. So that's acting again like an electronic differential, but also with some kind of traction control because if this one stalls, this one isn't spinning up and trying to turn you around in a circle. Interesting to see if that makes any effect to the actual driving of the vehicle. So I need to sort out that differential brake mechanism, which is going to be tricky, uh, and then install it and then take this for a test run somewhere again and maybe tweak the motors and play around with the settings. But the most important thing is that I think it's now going to steer much better. This does not want to go around the corner. Come on. So that's good news. Uh, so that's it for now. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye.